Hi guys and welcome to Viewtober. It's nice and cool outside and I'm just chilling. When it comes to chilling, I try to think of things that I can do on days that I don't have work. I believe that's reading a good book. I'm gonna try to do this video without much ifs, ands, or buts and without a lot of long pauses. I'm gonna show you guys a few books that I either read or will be reading throughout this fall time. Some of them I've watched the movie or the show for but have not actually read them. So I'm going to to show you some of the books that I have read and will probably read again or will be reading this fall. Just keep watching. The first book that I want to show you guys is Go Ask Alice. Go Ask Alice is a book that was basically a diary of a girl. Her name is not said in the book. It's just by Anonymous. I will read you the back and what it says. January 24th. After you've had it, there isn't even life without drugs. It started when she served was served a soft drink laced with LSD and a dangerous party game. Within months, she was hooked, trapped in a downward spiral that took her from her comfortable home and loving family to the mean streets of an unforgiving city. It was a journey that would rob her of her innocence, her youth, and ultimately her life. Read her diary into her world. You will never forget her. For 35 years, the unclaimed best-selling first-person account of a teenage girl's harrowing descent into the nightmarish world of drugs have left an inevitable mark on generations of teen readers. As powerful and as timely today as ever, Go Ask Alice remains the definitive book on the horror of addiction. An extraordinary work document of horrifying reality the new york times book review i had to read this book we were doing independent reading and this was one of the books on one of my lists for school i just saw everybody reading it and i'm like what is this book okay i'm gonna read it i read this book and it was like something i couldn't be put down because as you know as teenagers or as girls or just as anyone who's going through a lot journaling has always been something that helped us cope this girl journaled pretty much her whole experience the life leading up to her taking drugs or being served drugs without her knowledge and in this world right now a lot of people are doing that are taking drugs and are using drugs especially now that marijuana is becoming legal in more states not like people weren't doing it before but now people are doing it more because you can get it and not get arrested for having it depending on how much you have and depending on where you are. I'm someone, you use drugs, hey, that's on you, okay? I am not a victim to this because I have smoked marijuana here or there, okay? I haven't smoked in months, been okay, but I wasn't a big smoker either. I'm someone who, like Alice, took it she took it without knowing i took it due to peer pressure my senior year everybody was doing it and it came to a point where it's like here try it try it and i started trying it and i ended up buying like carts and having a pen i would try smoke i would smoke a blunt here or there but it wasn't something that i was like okay i gotta have it i have i know people and there's nothing wrong with it you do you just gotta know how much you have and how much you can take go ask alice i was reading this and just being someone who journaled a lot and still journals now and someone who understands this world even though it's not me but I have people who have struggled with drug addiction have made bad choices due to taking drugs this book was really like an eye-opener and this was something that I couldn't put down one it's small but it was good I give this if I'm rating this I'm going to give this book four out of five stars one to the next one now this one y'all this book you can tell i love this book and i gave this book some loving because i got tape all over it it's coming apart this book was also a book that i had to read for school off a list of books for independent reading and this was one of the books that i chose because one i was going to be reading a handmaid's tale but somebody stole my book why somebody stole my book i don't know but somebody stole my book so i had to pick another one i put the girl on a train let me read the back and we'll get into the stories every day the same rachel takes the same commuter train every morning and night every day she rattles down the track flashes past a stretch of cozy suburban homes and stops at the signal that allows her to daily watch the same couple breakfasting on their deck she's even started to feel like she knows them jess and jason she calls them 
Their life, as she sees it, is perfect, not unlike the life she recently lost, until today. And then she sees something shocking. It's only a minute until the train moves on, but it's enough. Now everything's changed. Unable to keep her keep it to herself, Rachel goes to the police. But is she really as unreliable as they say? Soon, she is deeply entangled not only in the investigation, but in the lives of everyone involved. Has she done more harm than good? The girl on the train has more fun with unreliable narration than any chiller since Gone Girl in the New York Times. So when I read this book, just me reading in general, I do not good reading. Like if I have a good book, like um, Go Ask Alice, if I have a good book, I will sit down and read it for hours and hours and hours. But more recently, since I became acquainted to Audible, having a book and then having the book on Audible and reading it and listening to it at the same time works for me. I get the book done and that's what I did with The Girl on the Train. This was the first book that I ever read with Audible and ever since then all the books that I get or most of the books I get I also get on Audible so I could read it with the narration. A lot of people don't like that, don't like when somebody's reading to them but for me it works best but that's just me. I read this book before I watched the movie and ever since then I was like okay yeah the book was way better and then also hearing someone read it too but I was like in my seat like what she did who what she got pregnant when not saying this is what happens in the book but I'm saying like that's how I was I was reacting very like as if I was watching a movie and that's what happens with narration or that's what happens with books in general people generally prefer book over movies especially if there's a book and then they make a movie after it so there's a lot of books out there that have movies that are made about them and most of the most movies are made about books there's a lot of shows now being made about books so when i read this book i it was just something very it was suspenseful it had terror it was it was just very like it was a lot going on and my mind was raveling and unraveling out all at once i definitely am going to give it a five star rating in my book okay five stars for the girl on the train i don't even know what to say but on to the next the next book i'm going to be talking to you guys about is life and death the twilight reimagined the 10th anniversary edition so as you can see this book is pretty much in good condition and that is because i got the 10th anniversary edition of it but i wanted to get this one just in case i was like i'm not lugging around this <laughs> big book i'll just read it from here so the 10th anniversary edition has both the reimagined life and death and also it has the first book of twilight the twilight saga not you know twilight with this book it's half and half so you read it like this you get twilight and then get to half of it and you turn it over and you're going to be reading life and death life and death is the first book reimagined and it is bella being a guy named Bo and edward being a girl named edith so pretty much the characters were switched by genders basically so edith colin and Bo or Buford Swamp. Everyone's changed. Jacob's character is a girl. You know, everything switched up. So I'm going to be talking about both these books, but first I'm going to talk about this one because I started reading this first. I've seen all the Twilight movies, love Twilight, and I want them to make a new one, and I love Twilight too because it always came out either on my birthday or around my birthday. So I made it a mission that when the new movies came out, I would be sitting in the theaters watching them, okay? And I was definitely hoping that after the last movie there was going to be another one. I was like, why not? Because they need to have one about Renesmee. But when I found out that Stephanie Myers was making a 10th anniversary edition, like, I was like, damn, I gotta read this. I'm gonna read. I don't know what you would call, what is this? I Somebody comment down below what is this, what this is called, what I've been reading for the other books. Like, the preview... You know, an a excerpt? I don't know, but I'm gonna read it, okay? When Buford Swan moves to the gloomy town of Forks and meets the mysterious, alluring Edith Collin, his life takes a thrilling and terrifying turn. With her porcelain skin, golden eyes, mesmerizing voice, and supernatural gifts, Edith is both irresistible and emetic. What Bo doesn't realize is that the closer he gets to her, the more 
he is putting himself and those around him at risk and it might be too late to turn back. In celebration of the 10th anniversary of Twilight, Stephanie Meyer has crafted Life and Death, a bold and compelling reimagining of the iconic love story that will surprise the enthralled reader. This special dual edition includes a foreword by the author as well as the complete original novel. Turn this book over to read Twilight. So Life and Death, I'm like, oh wow, that's it's cool, that's different, that's something, you know, the, maybe the book needed or maybe just Twilight, the Twilight Saga needed in different, maybe something the Twilight Saga needed differently because we all wanted another movie maybe even another book and we were asking for it and she provided even though it's pretty much the same story just with different characters and switched around by gender roles it was still something that we were like huh okay yes we needed that let's we're okay we're we're interested and i started reading in it and i was interested and so i'm definitely because i love twilight and just because stephanie myers has been coming stephanie meyer stephanie meyer has been coming out with some new and exciting things that we have been asking for and we have been interested in i'm gonna give this a four and a half just because i think the original is better but this is just as good and now we're gonna switch it over to twilight this move these books are just good for the fall because it's giving us something when you think of fall or you think of halloween and all the spooky things you know you got all of that in here you got vampires and werewolves all we're missing is some witch it's still good like you're giving us what we asked for and we want to be spooked during this fall season so these why these books are perfect to be spooky dookie duked okay now on to twilight when isabel swan or isabella swan moves to the gloomy town of Forks and meets the mysterious luring Edward Collin. Her life takes a thrilling and terrifying turn. With his porcelain skin, golden eyes, mesmerizing voice, and supernatural gifts, Edward is both irresistible and enigmatic. What Bella doesn't realize is that the closer she gets to him, the more she is putting herself and those around her at risk. And it might be too late to turn back. Deeply seductive and extraordinary, suspenseful, Twilight has enraptured millions and become and became and become a modern classic redefining genres within young adult literature and inspiring a phenomenon that has had readers yearning for more. We've been yearning. We've been yearning. This special 10th anniversary dual edition includes a foreword by the author as well as a complete reimagining of the original novel turn this book over to read life and death she's giving us we were yearning and she's giving us she's feeding us something that we've been asking for and we're loving it and we're gonna keep loving it because you just wait until what i show you next this is getting a five out of five okay five out of five stars damper right there okay <gasps> On to the next. Now, I was hyping up Twilight so much that y'all think I was done. Stephanie Meyer did not quit. Recently, in August, Stephanie Myers produced this beautiful creature right here called Midnight Sun. And yes, yeah, she did a reimagining of Twilight, but do you think she was going to reimagine this? Okay. Midnight Sun, if you all do not know, is a reimagining of the first book of Twilight sort of but instead of it being switched gender roles or switched anything she switched it and she put it instead of isabel's isabella or bella's perspective it is an edward's perspective and let me tell you it's darker it's gloomier it's more terrifying it's all of that put into this book and man did stephanie meyer hit us with this one this is a winner right here and i have been reading it and i have been loving it and i have been like stuck in it and also like the girl on the train and like twilight been reading it with audible guys i wish i had a cold for you and i wish i was sponsored because audible you have been a lifesaver for me i've been getting books done like this because of you okay i am just loving this i'm loving the cover stephanie meyer went to town with this book and definitely went to town with this cover okay 
okay midnight sun what does that have to do with a pomegranate but when you read the book you'll understand and it looks delicious it makes me want to eat it and i enjoy reading i'm going to read the back first and then i'm going to go into this right here i can't sleep i murmured answering her question more fully she was silent for a moment at all she asked never i breathed as i met her penetrating gaze read the surprise and the sympathy there i abruptly yearned for sleep not for oblivion as i had before not to escape boredom but because i wanted to dream maybe if i could be unconscious if i could dream i could live for a few hours in a world where she and i could be together she dreamed of me i wanted to dream of her she stared back at me her expression full of wonder i had to look away i could not dream of her she should not dream of me that is from edward's perspective and it's just like huh everybody was from when twilight first came out edward jacob edward jacob but we knew what jacob felt jacob professed his love for bella and continued to do it until he fell in love with his daughter we never really knew what edward felt before him and bella got together and when he did speak of his emotions or did explain how he felt it was to bella and it was the bare minimum of i love you and i don't want to lose you and i would lay down my life for you but what was he thinking on the inside did he want to kill her we knew that in the first movie he wanted to she her blood smelled so good okay but did like what was he thinking what were his his inner thoughts and he speaks about this in this book and then when i was like okay we got life and death reimagined from the first book of twilight should she hit us or should whoever created the twilight saga movies should they hit us with another movie about this and then we were talking they were had articles videos about robert pattinson talking about patterson whatever his name talking about if he would ever be in another movie i think he said no but come on now we can't lose edward who are we gonna get to act for you okay now i'm gonna read the inside and then we're gonna get to the next book because i can talk about twilight and this book for hours i could see how easy it would be to fall into loving bella it would be exactly like falling effortlessly not letting myself love her was the opposite of falling it was pulling myself up a cliff fit. hand over hand the task as grueling as if i had no more than mortal strength when edward cullen and bella swan met in twilight an iconic love story was born but until now fans have heard only bella's side of the story at last readers can experience edward's version of version in the long-awaited companion novel midnight sun this unforgettable tale as told through edward's eyes takes on a new and decidedly dark twist meeting bella is both the most unnerving and intriguing event he has ever experienced in all his years as a vampire as we learn more fascinating details about edward's past and the complexity of his inner thoughts we understand why this is a defining struggle of his life how can he justify following his heart if it means leading bella into danger in midnight sun stephanie meyer transports us back into the world that has captivated millions of readers and brings up us an epic novel about the profound pleasures and devastating consequences of immortal love stephanie meyer you did it with this one i am not done with this book but i got a feeling it's gonna hit another five i'll let you know in another video that might not be related to books but i'll just let you know when i'm done to give you a full rating on this book because stephanie meyer you there may never be more twilight movies but if you hit us with some more books i think we will be very pleased because when I found out there was another book coming out, I had to make sure to pre-order it. And it came on time, and the first thing I did was strip it out of the box, take a picture of it, post it, and started reading. Because this is something, honestly, it's gold, okay? The next book, if there is a next book, should be about Renesme and Jacob's love. You guys need to hop on the Twilight bandwagon, whether it's watching the movies that most of you guys say are stupid, which I don't want to hear, or reading the books, which will give you a more captivating and a more filling 
desire of what I am feeling, okay? And you guys will definitely fall in love. So don't sleep on it. Do not sleep on it. Even if you pick up this book first, because there aren't any books coming after it or aren't any books after it right now, you could definitely start reading it right now. So right now this will be a five but until i finish the book i am not going to be able to give it a full reading but on to the next all right guys we're coming down to the last home stretch and i have four more books to show you guys these books personally or these books specifically i have not read but i'm going to this fall after i finish midnight sun one of these books is a movie that i have watched honestly it's a classic ballpark right now i could tell you i'm going to give it a five star rating even though i haven't seen it but just from watching the movie and knowing how much that movie is a blockbuster five star pretty much all raves about it i'm gonna like it and that book is the outsiders i'm so excited to read this book i don't even know but i'm excited to read this book just look at that cover y'all did that okay y'all did this and this is a platinum edition i don't know what that means but must be good i believe my friend aldo gave me this book he had it wasn't gonna do anything with it and i was like i'll take it it's the damn outsiders i'm gonna read the back and then we're gonna get into it Tony boy one of them laughed then cussed me out in a low voice i couldn't think of anything to say there just isn't a whole gosh i can't read it when it sounds like this but if you watch the movie, you know how Ponyboy talks. There just isn't a whole lot you can say while waiting to get mugged. So I kept my mouth shut. Need a haircut greaser? The medium-sized blonde pulled a knife out of his back pocket and flipped the blade open. I finally thought of something to say. No, I was backing up away from that knife. Of course I backed right into one of them. They had me down in a second. They had my arms and legs pinned down and one of them was sitting on my chest with his knees on my elbows and if you don't think that hurts, you're crazy. I fought to get loose and almost did for a second. Then they tightened up on me and the one on my chest lugged me a couple of times. So I lay still, swearing at them between gaps. A blade was held against my throat. How'd you like that haircut to begin just below the chin? As timely now as it was when it was written nearly 45 years ago, The Outsiders is a dramatic and enduring work of fiction. Books such as The Outsiders have the power to affect readers' lives and stay with them forever. Now, Platinum Editions help to identify those who work works by presenting a selection of timeless stories packaged in high-end, high-quality paperback editions. With all the allure and durability of Platinum itself, these are stories that will captivate readers in additions that they will cherish for years to come. A heroic story of friendship and belonging. No one ever said life was easy but Pony Poi is sure is pretty sure that he's got things figured out. He knows that he can count on his brothers Derry and Soda Pop. He knows that he can count on his friends true friends who would do anything for him like Johnny and 2-Bit. And when it comes to the socks so I never understood that. Was it the socks or the socks? you know and I haven't watched that movie in a while and I remember reading this book like I started reading it and then like I never finished it and I couldn't remember that a vicious gang of rich kids who enjoy beating up on greasers like him and his friends he knows that he can count on them for trouble but one night someone takes things too far and pony boy's world is turned upside down <laughs> It's right here. I think I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this after I watch, after I finish Midnight Sun. Just because I love The Outsider so much, like the movie, even though I don't remember it, but I just remember how I was feeling while watching The Outsiders. I just know that this, like I said, this book is gonna be five stars. And if it's anything like past books that end up having movies or shows, it's gonna be better than the movie. Unless the movie went exactly by the book, which in most cases is not true. So I'm excited for this. Can't wait for that. This will be getting a five star. I already know. On to the next. Now, this next book, 13 Reasons Why, is 
is a book that has a show based on the book. Should I have read the book where I watched the show? Most definitely. But I didn't. Why? I don't know. I was just intrigued. I was like, huh, Selena Gomez helped produce this show? And the show is, like, good? Selena Gomez has definitely outdone herself by being an actor and a artist of music who has produced things and has created things that are out of this world and is something in itself and she's still doing that still creating music has a show on hbo called selena's chef i think it's called and she is still out here making things happen for herself and honestly selena you go girl from being in movies to now producing shows and movies you, it's definitely you're definitely making things work out for you and with all the stuff going on with you and your past and just whatever you have been going through because i can't say nothing all i see is stuff that they talk about on tv and in them tabloids but i ain't gonna say shit girl i just know you have went through it and you're getting through it and you out of it hopefully but 13 reasons why watching the show that show hit every hit that it could hit it hit all the hits hit all the tick marks it checked every box for being a teenager when it first came out from being a teenager to seeing things happen to having friends who have committed suicide for having friends who have been bullied from being bullied myself from drugs and drinking to parties and all that stuff it was basically a real life what happens but it is fictional and was based on this book it was definitely a new way of finding out someone has committed suicide finding out why she did it i could tell you this because just watching a preview of 13 reasons why or even reading the back of this book she used cassette tapes and now a lot of people are saying i have said this is it gonna happen no most likely not but a lot of people are saying that if they were ever to kill themselves they're going to go by this a lot of parents are not liking or didn't like the fact that the show was on wanted to, it to come off because it was a bad representation and would be a bad influence on their children but they have to understand and this is from my perspective that this is real life though it is fictional and is not based on a true story it happens and at the end of each episode they always say if you have someone or know someone who's going through trouble who is thinking about committing suicide is going through bullying or just going through depression or through drinking or drugs and all that stuff they always say to go to a hotline and they have a link at the end of the screen and i just think they are trying to portray something that is so true and that can happen and does happen and they want to though they're showing it they want to help they want to show these things happen and people are crying for help even if they tell you they don't need your help don't stop okay no stop them but don't don't stop them from receiving the help that they need push and if they're not going to someone you need to go to someone in confidence that you can trust being someone who has dealt with depression who is still dealing with depression and has thought of committing suicide on multiple occasions it is imperative that you say something i would not be here today if it wasn't for my friends going to get someone and telling someone that i needed help I have not been okay. I am not well. And if it wasn't for those friends, I would not be here today. So I thank you very much. This book, even though I have not read it from watching the show, I'm giving it five stars because people need to know. Every time it's Suicide Prevention Month or Suicide Awareness Month, I am always posting something because this shit is real and it is a battle for people. And people don't understand that their actions have consequences. You bully someone, they will either punch you back bully you back or in their life to make it stop and it's my cause for wanting to kill myself was not about bullying but it's real and people have reasons and it is not the best solution it's not a good solution but people think that's all they have because they don't have someone to say i'm here but i had people i had someone tell people that i that they are there and i appreciate you so on to this book 
before I start blowing my eyes out. 13 reasons why. Brilliant and mesmerizing Kirkus starred thriller-like pacing the New York Times. Suspenseful and addictive entertainment weekly. You can't stop the future. You can't rewind the past. The only way to learn the secret is to press play. Clay Jensen doesn't want anything to do with the tapes Hannah Baker made. Hannah is dead. Her secret should be buried with her. Then Hannah's voice tells Clay that his name is on her tapes and that he is in some way responsible for her death. All through the night, Clay keeps listening. He follows Hannah's recorded words throughout his small town and what he discovers changes his life forever. Listen to the Hannah Baker tapes on YouTube. Read Jay Asher's answers to 13 reasons, 13 questions about 13 reasons why. Share your story to 13reasonswhy.com. A book that you can't get out of your mind. Ellen Hopkins, best-selling author. The number one New York Times and international bestseller now in 31 language. Eerie, beautiful, and devastating. Chicago Tribune, a mystery, eulogy, and ceremony. Sherman Alexi, best-selling author of Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. Like I said, j just from knowing the story, I definitely feel like I'll be giving this book five stars. 13 Reasons Why, watching it, I have cried through several episodes, seeing the things that are true that do happen I just I'm glad that someone thought it was okay or someone put their foot down and said it's okay to share these things it's okay to put it into a story because somebody wrote a book about it and there's books about it and like go ask Alice because this one thing happened to her it came spiraling down and she ended up taking her life no one helped Hannah Baker no one listened ultimately she punished those who wouldn't listen she punished those that didn't help and she made what happened happen i thank jay asher and i thank selena gomez for giving us something to listen to watch and read that can ultimately change our perspectives on what is happening in today's society so 13 reasons why a possible five star this next book i just got i still have a price sticker on it but it's called even if we break their story ends tonight this book seem, was seems so intriguing i i got it from sam's club you go into sam's club and you see some books that you've never seen before this is probably at target and i never seen it before and i was like huh this is like a good fall book it seems mysterious it seems cool it seems interesting it seems a little terrifying and horrific so I was like, let me read the back of it. Let me see if it's a little interesting and it seemed interesting. So I picked it up and I'm like, okay, this is going to be a fall book. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to read Five friends go to a cabin. Four of them are hiding secrets. Three years of history bind. Two are doomed from the start. One person wants to end this. No one is safe. Are you ready to play? Immersive and captivating from its well-drawn characters to their twisty game turned crime scene. Even if we break is thrilling in every sense of the word. Karen M. McManus, number one New York best time seller, New York Times best selling author of One of Us is Lying, One of Us is Next. The thing that scares me the most isn't that I might break us further apart, it's that I want to. It was never just a game. Set over the course of one deadly weekend and told from five pulse-pounding perspectives, Even If We Break is a shocking thriller about a group of friends tied together by a game and their relationships that define them. The healthy ones, the toxic ones, and the ones that will break them. It's like, ah, this book seems interesting. I might be interested and so I was like do I do I do I do I do I and I did I bought it and I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna give you my zero to five stars review after I read it and it's small so I'm hoping it will be a quick read but you know we never know with books you know it can be small but have very small writing and then you'll be reading it for three days or two months but who knows on to the next now we are at the last book this book I also got from Sam's Club and this book I saved for last because it's a new book and just like Midnight Sun it is part of a trilogy it's, it's just part of a group of books that I I thought would be interesting to pull out. Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This book is the fourth book in, I'm not gonna say the saga, 
but I'm gonna say the the Hunger Games trilogy this book is the fourth book I was excited when I heard just like Midnight Sun I was excited that Suzanne Collins was coming out with another book I was like if there's another book then there most definitely has to be another movie right who knows the ballad of did I say the ballad sorry Miss Ballard the ballad of songbirds and snakes by Suzanne Collins ambition will fuel him comp competition will drive him but power has its price it is the morning of the reaping that will kick off the 10th annual hunger games in the capital 18 year old Coriolanus snow is preparing for his one shot at glory as a mentor in the games one mighty house of snow has fallen on a hard time its fate hanging on the slender chance that Coriolanus will be able to out, out charm outwit and out maneuver his fellow students to mentor the winning tribute the odds are against him He's been given the humiliating assignment of mentoring the female tribute from District 12, the lowest of the low. Their fates are now completely intertwined. Every choice Coriolanus makes could lead to favor or failure, triumph or ruin. Inside the arena, it will be a fight to the death. Outside the arena, Coriolanus starts to feel for his doomed tribute and must weigh his need to follow the rules against his desire to survive no matter what it takes so i think this is on president this book is based on president snow if you watch the movies and read the books you know who president snow is so i think this book is based on him so this will be an interesting turn of events when it comes to the hunger games and all the hunger games books and movies hey guys i've